Hi everybody, my name is Yves Fauser. I'm a technical product manager in VMware's network and security business unit. Uh, standard disclaimer, what I will show you in this presentation and in the demo is subject to change. Uh, market conditions, technical feasibility might uh, divert us from our past in the last minute, so take this into consideration, please. Okay, so what's Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a container orchestrator. There were enough talks about Kubernetes already, so I, I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, it basically just takes your container images that you have and makes sure that they are uh, run in your infrastructure in a distributed and highly available form. So that's the role of Kubernetes. Um, I will focus only on the components that are interesting to the network implementation since there are enough uh, overview presentations on Kubernetes out there. Uh, what is interesting for us is where do we integrate and we integrate both on the level of the master with the master API and on the level of the nodes where you actually run the containers. The nodes, the worker nodes are running what is called pods and I will go into the pod construct in a second and those pods need a connection to the network. Each and every pod has a single IP address that needs to be routed in the cluster and NSX takes care of that with our integration. But we also integrate on the master side because we, um, the, on the master side, the core components are the distributed key value store, which is etcd, and the Kubernetes API server that sits in front of it. And it has callback capabilities. So you can say, let me know as soon as an object changes. And we integrate on, on that uh, front. So if we sense a new namespace or a new pod uh, is created, we actually take action and configure something in NSX. You will see that in the demo. So I talked about pods. What is a pod? A pod is a collection of containers that form a single functional unit. So in this example that you see on that slide, we have a web server pod that serves web requests, and it will, it will write logs. And on the other side, we have a syslog uh, container that can get those logs and export them out. And it works because in the pod, the file system and the network access is shared amongst all, is of, the, uh, all of those containers. So they share the same resources on the OS. They, f they form a single functional unit. And there is uh, one infrastructure container called the pause container that basically exposes his network interface and his file system access to the other containers. And therefore, also, this pod can only exist on a single node. You can't distribute the containers of a pod uh, on multiple nodes. As I already said, each pod has a single IP address, uh, a unique IP address in the cluster. And again, we are taking care in NSX to route uh, inside of that cluster uh, between pods and in and out of, uh, of the cluster. What is Kubernetes namespace? The Kubernetes namespace was primarily uh, a name uniqueness construct. So in this uh, example here, we have two pods called Redis master, and their name would collide because Kubernetes doesn't have concepts of UUIDs to make uh, names unique. So you need, you need to put them in different passes uh, to make them unique, and that's what namespaces uh, started off being. But the namespaces got enhanced to be a tenancy construct. It started with quota, where you could give memory and CPU limits per namespace, but now it also has role-based access control, so where you can assign users and user groups to, object, to be able to access objects in the namespace. But we also now have network policy, where I can define in a Kubernetes native language what is allowed to be accessed from the outside into the namespace, so ingress policies, and what is able to communica communicate inside of the namespace. So this resembles very much what we did with VMs, with micro-segmentation. In fact, it's the same thing. And for our integration, we're actually using the same construct, those labels, to identify the pods and to allow or disallow communication within the cluster and in and out of the cluster. So how do we integrate? Um, we have a component called NCP, and that NCP is, is uh, getting the callbacks from the Kubernetes API and has a workflow to create things on, uh, on uh, NSX. Um, if we see a new namespace, what happens is that we create a network topology for it. So we create a tenant router, we assign a subnet out of a block of IP addresses to that tenant router interface, and we attach a logical, a logical switch. 
And when pods get created, we connect them to that logical switch, uh, give them an IP address, um, and so they can communicate. Um, those pod interfaces are logical ports on NSX just as VM interfaces. So we have all the features that a VM has on NSX. We can export IP fixed flow records for the visibility. We can start a remote mirroring session so we can send the traffic to an analysis station. Uh, we have simple things like counters um, and everything that you have in a VM, including spoof guard to secure um, the, uh, to, to make sure that the pod always only uses the IP address and the MAC address that is assigned to it. Uh, to get in and out of those logical networks, we have our high-performant uh, edge gateway, which uses Intel's DPDK uh, to uh, achieve a very high performance in and out of those overlay networks. Um, those namespace networks are spread across nodes, so they are not specific to a, a worker node, uh, they exist on all of the nodes. And finally, what we can do is we can give namespace foo and namespace bar here uh, IP addresses from different blocks and decide uh, with annotations of the namespace if they should be routed namespaces or NATed namespaces. So if we want to hide all those IP addresses behind NAT or if we want to directly route. If we want to directly route, we can even inject that newly created subnet for the namespace using BGP into your core networking. So we add a lot of capabilities with NSX to uh, Kubernetes. Okay, so here's my demo video. Uh, before I start, what I will show is the uh, Kubernetes nodes run as VMs on a vSphere cluster, and I also added an additional VM, which is my database. With that, I want to show that we can mix workload types. We can mix uh, a Kubernetes cluster with a VM workload and define a single policy to allow or disallow traffic between them. So this is my vSphere cluster, I have my two nodes and my master as VMs, and here's my Redis database, and it's patched to an NSX logical switch called database VMs. If I look into this database VMs logical switch, this is my port for my VM, and I see the VM name here, and I will match later on on the VM name in the firewall rule set. What I will do now is I will uh, we, we'll look at the namespaces on the system, and here you see there is a namespace called Yelp app. That namespace has a logical switch and a logical router attached to it. So this is the network topology that we created for that specific namespace. Now I'm switching over the context of the CLI to use that namespace. And the next thing I'll, I'm doing is I'll point to a YAML spec of the application. That YAML spec is on GitHub. So here you see that's my front end. And the front end is tagged with a SEC group here. So we have a label identifying it as a front end pod. Then I have my app middle tier pod, which also has a set group tag. And down here we have some more details like services and the URL where I want to access my application on. So now I'll point Kubernetes to that YAML spec on GitHub and it will take that YAML spec and then create all those pods for me, so the containers for me. So here you can watch what happens. Up there you see we are now in the container creation phase and it will flip to the running phase in, in, a, in a short period of time. So the first one is running, the second one is running. Now we can have a look at the uh, ingress also after we look at the overview again. And here's my URL that I can access. Before we access that URL, I'll show you what happened on NSX. So if I refresh the logical switch view, I now see the logical ports for those uh, parts. So I have a logical port for the pod, which is a child interface of the VM that hosts those pods, the node VM. Then if we look at the uh, uh, tags on the pod, you see the set group label that we had as a label before in Kubernetes. So we are copying those labels to the pod, and then we have all the context that we had got from, from Kubernetes also in NSX. Now we are using those tags to match so I have three security groups. The first one is DB servers, and that one matches the logical port of the VM, and it matches that by the membership criteria of the name, so it uses the name to identify the logical port that belongs to that group. For the app servers, I'm matching on the tag, as you just saw, so the SEC group label that got uh, uh, translated to a tag. Now in my firewall rule set, I match on those groups. So I say I disallow traffic from web to web because web servers shouldn't talk to each other. 
I'm allowing the traffic from the web tier to the app tier on a specific port, and I'm allowing the traffic from the app tier to the DB tier uh, on the port 6379, which is my Redis port. And then I'm also allowing DNS because uh, I need name resolution, and then um, I have uh, my drop all rule at the end to make sure that I'm not uh, allowing traffic that I don't want to allow. Yeah, and here's what happens. We can vote, so this vote goes into the Redis uh, backend, and if we look at the firewall here, if I change that to drop, you will see if we refresh uh, the application page that we are now dropping the traffic. So my vote is gone. I can't vote anymore because I uh, closed up the connection between the app and the database. Now what if I want to troubleshoot that? We have a tool called Traceflow and with Traceflow what I can do is I can select the source port and the destination port and, uh, and send uh, artificial traffic to see what happened in the system. Here I'm selecting the app server port as the source, I'm selecting the destination VM as the destination, and then in the advanced tab I'm changing the traffic to be a TCP, TCP soon instead of an ICMP. And so I change to TCP, I give it some ephemeral uh, source port, I give it 6379 as the destination port, I send the trace, and then you will see, okay, where is the traffic dropped? It's dropped by the firewall, right? So I can look at uh, where it is dropped, I can see the firewall rule, just 1085, go back to my rule set and correct my mistake that I did that killed my application. So just go to that 1085 and change it. Since I'm running out of time, I'll go to the conclusion, which is what NSXT brings to Kubernetes is unified networking for, for workloads, for VMs, for uh, Kubernetes pods. It gives you this micro-segmentation both with Kubernetes network policy, as Nathan uh, explained in, in his earlier slide, but also with more static approaches like the one you saw in my demo. Uh, you get full network visibility, you have a logical port per part in Kubernetes, you have counters, you can redirect traffic, you have IP fix to export flow records, and you have the full support of uh, VMware behind it uh, with the number one SDN solution, which is NSX. And with that, if you have any questions,